started, so I would like to ask all the members present to be ready. And I want to first thank the members of the media for joining us today at this press conference as we reorganize our SALT Caucus, which was started in 117 Congress by our dear colleague, uh, Congressman Tom Zwazi of New York, who is no longer with us. But we're really happy. sounds like it's really grim. <laughs> He's still with us. Let's He's be very clear. Okay. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, not yeah, with the Salt Caucus, but uh, he's no longer with us in Congress. <laughs> But we're happy to uh, continue the work uh, through this Congress, and we are reorganizing this, and we have some new members that are joining us. So I just wanted to uh, welcome the members of the media, and I represent California's newly created uh, 40th Congressional District. And uh, I stand before you today with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle from across the country with constituents that are unfairly hurt by the current cap on SALT deductions. And through this SALT caucus, we hope to bring together like-minded members who can fight for relief for our middle-class families that we represent in each of our respective districts. But California, where I'm from, and Californians that I represent and across the state are burdened enough by high taxes and the rise of cost of living and housing. And so there is no reason why they should be hurt even more for state and local taxes at the federal level. That's why it's a top priority of mine in Congress to make life more mis uh, not miserable. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> more uh, affordable for Californians and repeal the t uh, salt cap, hurting my constituents and middle class uh, Americans across the nation. And so, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my uh, caucus co chair, Josh Gottheimer. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to call Swazi and tell him what you said, Young. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Young, uh, co chair Young. And uh, I know Mr. Garbrino, who's also a co-chair, and Anna uh, Eshu, who's also our co-chair, will speak in a minute. Um, I also want to welcome our vice chairs. I know Mikey Sherrill is here from the great state of Jersey uh, as a vice chair, as well as Katie Porter as a vice chair as well. I know Katie will be here in a minute, but I just want to thank everyone. We're, we're relaunching the Bipartisan Saw Caucus because for every member here and for the millions of middle-class families we represent, it's high time that Congress restores the state and local tax deduction to cut taxes and help make life more affordable for our families. Restoring SALT will get more dollars back into the pockets of hardworking families who are already struggling with high costs. And if you're just tuning into this issue, a bunch of us have been focused on this for a while, the 2017 tax hike bill gutted SALT, put a $10,000 cap on the deduction nationwide. It was a bit of red state versus blue states, T-birds versus the scorpions. You know, they want us to pay their bills. And just for the real world example of this, in my district, before 2017, a married couple of an electrician and a teacher making a typical salary saved $3,500 off their federal taxes with the SALT deduction. Now their taxes after 2017 went up. In Jersey, 80% of families have incomes of $216,000 or less that will be impacted and benefit from restoring SALT. Three million people. These are not. This is not a rich person's issue. This is a middle class issue. Where I live in Bergen County, the median property tax is more than $15,000. So we've heard arguments from all sides. You'll hear them now, also from my colleagues. But we all hear about restoring salt every day. We're in the, our districts from middle class, hardworking families. If you are against restoring salt, then you are against lowering taxes, right? So the bottom line is we're for lowering taxes, making life more affordable for families. This is just this was around for 104 years. It's double taxation when they gutted this. It's the moocher states trying to stick it to us. And so I just want to say to all my colleagues, thank you so much for being part of this caucus. We're going to stick together. We're going to work together. We're going to fight together because the bottom line is, you know, this is going to be there's going to be plenty of negotiations here. The only options and the options are clear. We can wait two and a half years and fully get our salt back for everybody. Or, you know, the store is open. We're happy to talk. We're happy to negotiate. The bottom line is this, though. What we can't negotiate about is whether or not we're for lowering taxes for our families and making life more affordable. We're not going to be a cheap date to our negotiators, so we're not going to settle for a low bid offer. So if you, if you want to talk, this is the caucus to talk to to get this done, to restore salt and make life more affordable. Thank you so much. God bless. And that was Garbarino here. Is he running in? Garbarino, are you hauling? Uh, forget, you know. We're going to turn now to great. Do you mind if we turn it? Because you're out of breath, Garbarino. And they try to bury Swaz already. 
Are you on in? Okay. Uh, our other co-chair, uh, we're going Democrat, Republican, a grand entry from New York, Garbarino. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Josh. And apologize, committee hearing, you know, gets uh, back to everybody up. But uh, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for joining us today for the, the kickoff of the SALT Caucus. Uh, in a little over two months, we're going to have tax day on April 18th. Another year, uh, our constituents are getting the short end of the stick. Another year, they're not, they're not able to uh, deduct more than $10,000 in, uh, in state and local deductions. My neighbors uh, who live right across the street from me, and these are not big homes. I got a teacher that lives across the street, pays over $17,000 a year in property tax. Fireman to the south pays $15,000. A cop to the north pays, I think, about $15,000 also. These are not millionaires. These are working class people, and every year, they, they, get, they get screwed, I'll put it that way. Uh, this cap does expire in 2025, uh, but it, uh, I don't want to wait that long. I'm, I'm happy that uh, we are here in a bipartisan manner, so we can get a bipartisan fix. This affects all of our constituents. So I hope this, uh, this caucus won. Uh, it, uh, the first thing we're going to do is hopefully find legislation that we can all agree on to address this. And two, hopefully we can all stand together to make sure that any proposed extension of this cap doesn't happen. That is very important because people are already talking about it. So I want to thank my co-chairs. I want to thank my, the vice chairs of this caucus and everybody else who's here today uh, so we can all stand together in unity to say we're done with this cap and we got to fix it. Thank you very much. That was quite like, you caught your breath there very nicely. <laughs> Interesting issue. Oh, and my, uh, one of my co-chairs, uh, Anna Eshoo. Right Where is she? Oh, there she is. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we all belong to uh, many caucuses uh, here in the Congress. Uh, I think the SALT Caucus uh, is the most, uh, has the most straightforward mission, to lift the cap on state and local taxes, full stop. Uh, so uh, it, this is an important uh, gathering. Uh, new members of the caucus that we welcome. Um, those that have been around for a while, it's bipartisan and it's very important. In 2017, when Congress uh, bulldozed uh, the state and local tax uh, deduction, despite uh, bipartisan uh, opposition, I believe then, as I do now, is an attack on the middle class. There's no question about it. I believe that then, I believe it now, uh, and it's one of the main reasons I voted against the, uh, the tax law. Uh, the SALT deduction is important, um, is an important deduction uh, for the middle class. Anyone that files long term, they have vo four basic deductions. Mortgage interest, health uh, expenditures, charitable contributions, and it used to be state and local taxes. So, uh, you know, it... Um, uh, that was really um, snatched out uh, uh, from people, and uh, uh, it's particularly burdensome uh, in regions like the Bay Area in California, if you don't know where that is, it's Northern California, uh, where the cost of living is really very, very high. Prior to 2017, my constituents deducted an average, none of you are sitting down, you're all standing up, uh, but um, get ready for this one. Uh, they deducted an average of $63,083 in state and local taxes. Uh, now it's, you know, capped at 10000 for both single filers and married couples. Uh, that raises taxes in my district for over 200,000 families in my district. 200,000 families. I think it's the congressional district that's listed as either number one, number two, or number three. Uh, but this, uh, uh, this is really a burden for them. So, uh, and in uh, the deduction was claimed by over three million households in California, earning less, earning less than a hundred thousand dollars. So I, I think that long short. We have a very solid, powerful case, a very powerful case. And uh, it, it takes a dedicated group of members, 
bipartisan, this caucus, uh, to push and to push hard so that this is restored. Uh, I think it's tax fairness. The President talked about what he thought tax fairness was last night. We're here to talk about it today and every day in the 118th Congress until we get this done. So thanks for showing up. Uh, Katie Porter, also from California. Thank Sorry. You. Thanks. I'm Congresswoman Katie Porter. I'm from Orange County, California. The state. I'm a vice chair. Thank you, Josh. The state and local tax deduction was in our tax code from its inception. And the reason it's there is because of the fundamental understanding that Americans should not be taxed on money they don't have. In this case, because they had to pay their state and local taxes. President Trump reversed over a century of precedent and poisoned our tax code with partisan political games. His $10,000 cap on the SALT deduction unfairly targeted states that did not support him in the election, including my home state in California. Now, before the Trump tax law, about one in three California taxpayers claimed the SALT deduction. And millions of middle-class Californians are counting on Congress to deliver tax fairness. So I am proud to have worked last Congress, the Congress before that, um, on making sure that we introduce legislation to reverse this unfairness and implement a sensible limit that ultimately can increase revenue over the long term. As Vice Chair, I'm proud to help relaunch the SALT Caucus today and want to thank all of the bipartisan members who are here with us today. Thank you so much. Sorry, my next person. Vice Chair, I'll introduce my friend and colleague and a champion on SALT, Representative Mikey Sherrill. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, it's, it's especially enjoyable to be here with my colleagues from the Northeast. You don't always hear about how people get screwed or the Moocher State, so it's, it's a, a, little, a little enjoyable. Um, but I think what we're all here representing are states that really have built this nation, states that continue to lead the nation on innovation, research and development, and that's because our states invest in things like education, uh, making sure we have some of the best teachers in the nation. That's why the AFT is so supportive of what we're trying to do here, uh, making sure we have great public services. That's why our firefighters and our police are so supportive of what we're doing here. Making sure really that we are investing in each and every citizen in our state so that they can perform at the highest possible levels. So you see before you people representing the most innovative districts in the United States of America, and now we're being punished for it. We're being punished for investing in our, our people and investing in our country. So every year, the SALT deduction cap imposes an unfair double taxation on our residents. And as you've heard, this is not some giveaway to the rich. This, these are middle class Americans that are taking advantage of our investments in education, our investments in our economies. Um, and so SALT makes it more challenging for our states to, to support places like New Jersey, the first in the nation public school system to fund our law enforcement officers, firefighters, pay our workers the highest wages in the nation on infrastructure and construction projects. Those fantastic public services improve New Jerseyans' quality of life and bring people to our state. You know, we have, we have some of the most innovative businesses in New Jersey, and I ask them again and again, why are you here? Why are you located here? And they tell me again and again because we have the highest educated workforce in the nation. Some of them have even tried to move out of New Jersey and they've come right back. And that's because of our workforce and that's because we support them. So I introduced the Middle Class Tax Relief Act with my colleague, Congressman Mike Lawler. We got the freshman early. We pulled him right in. This bipartisan legislation raises the cap on SALT deductions from $10,000 per household to $100,000 for a single filer and finally ends 
the biggest marriage penalty in our tax code by creating a $200,000 deduction for every married couple. It will fully eliminate the SALT deduction cap for 99% of the people in New Jersey's 11th district and allow re residents to deduct an additional $8 billion in state and local taxes over the next three years. So it's time to bring much needed tax relief to places like New Jersey to improve affordability to lower the tax burden on people in our state. I'm so excited to work with this group to get SALT done in this Congress. Thank you. And I will now turn it over uh, to Mike Lawler. Lawler. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here with everyone. I'm proud to be standing with all of my colleagues in the SALT caucus to address the urgent need to provide tax relief for families in districts like mine. Folks in the Hudson Valley are facing an affordability crisis due to inflation, skyrocketing energy costs, and the arbitrary cap on state and local taxes, commonly referred to as SALT, placed on residents of states like New York in 2017. It effectively leads to double taxation in a part of the country which already pays among the highest taxes in the nation. In Rockland and Westchester counties, where I represent, we ranked number one and number two in the nation for property taxes in 2019, averaging well over the $10,000 cap. And that's why I am proud to be part of this effort. Uh, it is critical, critical that we lift the cap on salt. And I think all of us collectively agree uh, that the cap needs to be lifted entirely. As a caucus, we're going to work collaboratively with each other uh, to do everything we can to make progress on this in this 118th Congress uh, so that our residents across the country who live in these high tax areas can afford to live there. They should not be penalized simply because they are already paying the highest taxes in the country. And so this is something where we will look at different legislation, different tactics, different bills to get this done. But one thing is for sure, we are not going to budge on this. The cap on salt needs to be repealed. Thank you very much. And now I introduce my colleague from New York, Jerry Nadler. Well, thank you very much. I'll be brief as I don't want to repeat things that have already been uh, said. When I first uh, got elected to Congress, salt was a strategic arms limitation treaty with Russia. <laughs> Since 2017, that when the Rep Jerry. that's what I knew it as. Since 2017, when the Republicans overhauled the tax system, it has become the the uh, state and local tax limitation. Because since 2017, middle class people, states like New York, have been taxed twice on the same amount. This puts an unfair burden on New York and other progressive states, which pay billions more in federal taxes than they receive back each year. The SALT deduction was originally put in place in 1913 with the adoption of the Federal Income Tax Amendment and the initiation of the first federal income tax. Repealing the limitation on the limitation is about restoring fairness. Now, as New York State continues its recovery from the vast economic impact of COVID-19, including a depletion of more than one million jobs, eliminating the SALT limitation could not be more vital. This caucus is so important because through it, we can come together as representatives of states that have been unfairly targeted and work with House leadership to restore the SALT deduction. I want to thank the caucus co-chairs Gottheimer, Garbarino, Kim, and Eshu, and I look forward to working with them. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a fellow New Yorker, Nick LaLota. Nice, Jerry. I like the salt line, Jerry. I'll be brief as well because we have to vote in a little bit. Just let me throw one number at you. For every dollar a New Yorker sends to Washington in his or her taxes, we get a mere 93 cents back of investment from Washington. One of the ways that we can right that wrong is by fully restoring SALT. And yes, one party took it away a few years ago when the other party had control of both houses in the White House. They didn't give it back either. But this bipartisan group behind me right now, we're standing strong. We want to deliver SALT back to our states, including New York, because it's the fair and right thing to do. 
And following me is uh, from California, Representative Jimmy Panetta. Thanks. I think he's good to skip. He's okay. Mike Garcia from California, Naval Academy guy. Same C. Well, I want to thank everyone for covering this in the caucus. Uh, it's good to see bipartisan efforts on really meaningful uh, uh, efforts. Uh, we need to do this. This this is not an upper class problem. A lot of people have this misperception that this is an upper class problem, but the reality is, is in states like California, New York, New Jersey, and many others now, if you own a home and you have a job, you're getting impacted by this very arbitrary and capricious $10,000 cap. And Frankly, $10,000 today in 2023 is not the same as what it was in 2017, so the rationale for this number uh, no longer exists. And it's not just blue states that are affected by this. As you know, the 2017 Tax Cut uh, and Jobs Act was the catalyst that got the economy going uh, back in 2017 and 2018, but it had this sort of middle finger in it for uh, meant to be uh, directed to California and New York. And, uh, meant to, frankly, screw the middle class in, in these blue states. And uh, unfortunately, this is having ramifications outside of those states now, and even uh, other states that uh, initially supported this are being impacted as the average value of home prices has doubled since 2017 in many states, and uh, other states have higher property tax uh, uh, rates than California and New York. So uh, this is going to affect the entire United States at some point, uh, not just the, uh, the, the Californias and New Yorkers of the world. Uh, this is going to affect all classes in some form, not just the upper class. It's a middle class problem, and it's working its way down. Uh, and so we have to double down on our efforts. This is a marriage penalty tax. It's $10,000 limit, regardless if you file uh, as a single taxpayer or as a married couple. That is uh, effectively a marriage penalty. Uh, and so I'm proud to have introduced H.R. 160, which is the Salt and Fairness Act of 2023, which is a straight stick removal of this $10,000 limit. Uh, and I think we need to hold this, this ground very firm. Uh, not to, not give in to negotiations unless it's a straight stick removal of this uh, this salt cap. Again, very arbitrary, very capricious, uh, and it's uh, hurting the middle class. So with that, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I'll introduce uh, Mr. Brad Schneider from uh, Illinois. Wow, the Midwest comes big. Comes in big. Thanks, Nick. Uh, good afternoon. I'll, I'll be brief, as uh, my colleague Jerry Nether said, not to repeat what's been said, but I'm at the risk of stating the obvious. No one likes to pay taxes. But when Americans do pay taxes, they want to know that the system in which they're paying their taxes is fair and that the money is being resp responsibly spent. The states represented here, California, New Jersey, New York, and Illinois, made the decision to invest in their schools, in their communities, in their roads. They've made the decision, and consequently, we represent taxes that tend to have higher state and local taxes. But we also represent states that pay into the federal government more than we get back, subsidizing other states. It's not fair, therefore, that our constituents, our citizens in our states, are paying taxes on taxes, effectively double taxation. That's why it is so important that we repeal the cap on the state and local tax deduction. It is affecting working families. People in my district, 48% of the taxpayers in my district, take this deduction above the cap. These are teachers, police officers, firefighters. The people that make up our communities are suffering because of the decision in 2017 to penalize blue states. And it needs to end, and it needs to end now. Thank you. It's my privilege to introduce Anthony Desposito. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we're also joined by someone who wasn't mentioned before, but also representing New York, Mark Molinaro. We join uh, today on the, in the nation's capital from all different parts of this country, from all walks of life representing different people. But what we share in a common theme is that we represent people who sent us here to Washington, D.C. to fight and protect them. And we represent people who are overtaxed. We represent people who are hardworking, blue-collar workers who are unable to deduct in their taxes because of decisions made here. But as you've heard from my colleagues, we join in a bar bipartisan effort. This isn't about being a Republican. It's not about being a Democrat. It's about delivering for the people that sent us here. And we are going to work in that same bipartisan fashion each and every day to make sure that we, re we restore those deductions. And we don't want to wait the two and a half years. We are going to work each and every day because that's what the people who elected us sent us here to do. And now I'd like to introduce also another fellow New Yorker, Pat Ryan. Bring it in big, Hall. 
Bring it in big, Ryan. Wrap it up. Josh, it Josh said I have to tell. <laughs> Josh said I have to tell salt jokes, but uh, um, it's an honor to be here. I'm proud to be a new member of this caucus to bring new energy to this fight. This is something I fought prior, uh, previously in local government, and now I'm honored to be here with colleagues uh, from both parties, as you heard, to fight for our constituents, cops, firefighters, healthcare workers, so many folks that have been through so much during the pandemic. And what do we do? We add even more burden and weight on their shoulders and double tax the folks that have gotten us through the hardest time uh, in we can all remember in almost a century. So uh, we will be strong and united, and it is an honor to, to be in this fight uh, for my constituents in Hudson Valley. And I'll turn it back to, to Josh. Josh. Thank you. Yeah. Josh, thank you. Let's any, any questions? We have, uh, we've got do you have any? Yeah, we, Go ahead. All right. Well, you heard uh, many of my colleagues, especially the Republicans on this uh, uh, bipartisan caucus, we are committed to working to find a solution. And any tax cuts or any discussion that we're having from this all caucus, we will make sure that our blue states like California and New York and New Jersey, our constituents are not hurt by the you know, deduction that we have and the limitation. This is why we're fighting. There are many different uh, proposals that is already, you heard about two of those today. We're gonna be having our own internal uh, caucus meetings and then there may be other proposals that members are discussing. So we're gonna have that and then with the full commitment that we're gonna find some solution, this Congress hopefully. And then we, we have a, a jurisdiction, um, you know, overlapping jurisdiction with ways and means, obviously, so we're going to be working very closely with them. The important thing is to know that our caucus members, who are both bipartisan, committed to finding a solution, we will be working very closely to do just that. And so... Garbana. No, no, I'm, that, that was perfect. Right. You hit everything. Okay. So uh, the important right thing is we're going to have a seat at the table when this discussion uh, comes up. Yeah. Well, look, uh, time is on our side. You know, this expires in 2025. Uh, there, whatever happens, whatever actions happen to 118th, because the Senate's Democrat and the White House is Democrat and the House is Republican, it's going to have to be a bipartisan solution. Uh, so we just got a whole bunch of new members in this last class. Mm -hmm. uh, four members on the Republican side determine a majority. I think uh, we have a pretty big seat at the table to discuss any uh, anything uh, that re re revolves around the salt tax deduction. I, I like the odds of having a bunch of new Republicans from <laughs> yeah. states New that York. need to restore salt. I think I think there's still uh, there's I think in New York in 2017, five members from New York, five Republicans from New York voted against the bill. That would have been enough to tank it in this Congress. And some of my colleagues already mentioned. I mean, you you heard very good reasons why we're fighting to make sure that we either our ultimate goal is to eliminate salt uh, deduct. I mean, salt cap altogether. But uh, in the short time that we have, we're going to make sure that in this Congress, 118 Congress, we find some solution because the bottom line is I represent California and especially Orange County, where medium home prices are a million dollars. That 10,000 cap doesn't help us. We're penalizing them. It is a double taxation for us. So I need to find solution for my constituents, but that will also be a solution for Americans go all across. Thanks, We've got to go vote. Thank so you. thank you so much thank for guys, being you. with us.